This is the second example that we have for special cases in trusses. Now we are very much clear about how to go in solving the truss example. The first step that we do is we find out the stability criteria, then we move on to find out the support reactions and after that we do the calculations for each joint so that we can find out force in each member. Now looking at this example, what we have to do the first thing in this case is we have to first find out the stability criteria. We have to first check whether the truss is stable or not. If the truss is stable, then only we move ahead, otherwise we stop there. Now we know the stability criteria is M equals 2J minus R. What is M? M is the number of members. J is number of joints and R is number of reactions. So first thing we'll do is we'll find out the number of members. We have got R as three. The only reason for that is we have a hinge support and a roller support. For hinge support, we have two support reactions and for roller support, we have one reaction. So the total number of reactions in this truss is three. Now, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put up these values in the equation and I'll try to find out whether this truss is stable or not. Now I can see that my right hand side is 5 whereas my left hand side is also 5. So I can say that my truss is perfectly stable. The next step that we do in this is we find out the support reactions. Now we know how to find out the support reactions. What we do is we convert the hinge support into the given two reactions that is a vertical reaction at this position I'll call this as VC and a horizontal support reaction HC. Over here I have a roller support for this I will convert it into a one single support reaction and that is perpendicular to the surface VD. Now, what I'll do is I'll apply the conditions of equilibrium. Now I can see that the assumption that I had done for the direction of HC was towards the right. The answer that I'm getting is negative, which indicates that my assumption of the reaction towards on right is wrong and I have to change the direction and make it towards left. So that is what I have done over here. I'm saying that HC is acting towards left now. Now, for the vertical uh, condition wherein I have VC and VD, I don't have any vertical force. So VC plus VD will be equal to zero. So now to find out VC plus VD, I need to make one reaction as zero and that I can do by taking moment about that point. So if I take moment about say point C, the vertical reaction at C becomes zero. So in that case, I can find out the vertical reaction at D. Now, 
Now, I got the vertical reaction at D as 520.83 Newtons. Since the answer is positive, my assumption that the vertical reaction acting upwards is correct. Now, what I'll do is I'll put up this value in the equation for Fy equal to 0. So if I put Vd as 520.83, I'll get Vc as negative. Now you can see that since I'm getting Vc as negative, that means my assumption of Vc acting upwards is wrong. So I have to take it downwards. So what I have done is I have I've just shown the sign that it is acting downwards. Now I'm done with two steps in solving a truss problem. The first step was stability criteria. The second step was finding out the support reactions. Now the third step being I have to find out the forces in each member by using method of joints. Now, if you see the example in this, we need to first identify whether can I apply the special case. We have three special cases. So can I apply any one of them? Now, if I look at joint C, joint C is having four collinear forces. That means HC, the reaction force and the force in member CD are collinear. The vertical reaction force VC and AC, the force in member AC is collinear. So I can say that the force in horizontal direction, that is HC, will be same as the force in member CD, whereas the force in member AC will be same as the vertical reaction VC. So by observation, I can directly state this forces. Now, we have already calculated the vertical reaction at C, that was 520.83 and it is acting downwards. So I have already shown the force acting downwards. Now, the horizontal reaction, since it was acting towards left, I have shown it acting towards left. Now, what I'll be doing is, I'll be applying the special case over here. Since the force in both the members is coming out as positive, that means what? The force in each member is a tensile force. Now, by using joint C, I have calculated or by observation, I have got the forces in member AC and CD. So what I'll do is, I'll just tick them. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'll be doing is, I'll move on to the next joint. If I move on to joint D, what happens in that case? If I take joint D, force in member BD is unknown. Force in member AD is again unknown, but force in member CD, I know that because I have just now seen by observation the force in member CD and I know the vertical reaction. Since I'm having only two unknown forces and join D, I can easily solve that. Now we know the vertical reaction at point B, so I can directly write that 520.83 which is acting upwards. This is my member CD, this is FAD, force in member AD and this being force in member BD. Now 
CD already I have seen by observation it is 500 Newton. Now looking at this figure what we need to do is we need to find out the angle for force in member AD. How do we do that? I need to find out this angle theta. To find out this angle theta, I can use the trigonometric ratio of tan, wherein I know the opposite side as well as the adjacent side. I got the angle as 53.13 degrees. Now I'll solve it by applying conditions of equilibrium. I'm getting the value for AD as negative. That means the force in member AD is compressive. Now, I'll apply the condition of equilibrium in the vertical direction and I'll find the force in member BD. My answer for force in member BD is coming out as positive, so again, it is a tensile force. Now, if I come back to the original figure, you can see that I have calculated the force in member AD and the force in member BD. Now, the only force that is remaining is in the member AB. So for that what I'll do is I'll take joint B. Now suppose if I take joint B, what happens at this joint? I know the force in member BD but I don't know the force in member AB. But this force since it is an inclined force I need to find out the angle for that. I need to find out the angle alpha. Now for that what I can do is I know this complete length over here it happens to be 4.8 meters whereas this length is just 1.4 meters. I can see that this height is 6.4 meters whereas this height is 5 meters. So this is the remaining height of 1.4 meters. I have already calculated the force in member BD that is 145.83 Newtons. I need to resolve this force AB. I need angle for that. So I can find out angle alpha as tan inverse of I need to find out the angle alpha and that is tan inverse of opposite side upon adjacent side. That is nothing but 1.4 divided by 4.8. See that the angle that I have got over here happens to be 16.26 degrees. Now I'll apply condition of equilibrium and find the force in member AB.
applying condition of equilibrium in at joint B, I found the force in member AB as 520.83 newtons and that happens to be a tensile force. So, coming back to my original figure, I have calculated forces in all the members. Now, the last step that I need to do in this case is prepare the table for this. AC, CD, AD, AB and BD. Five members. I had five members over here. I have written down all the five members. I need to just write down the magnitudes as well as their nature. That is either tensile or compressive. I know that at AC, the force in member AC is 520.83 tensile, CD it is 500 Newton tensile. You can see that at AD it is 833.3 Newton compressive. At BD, it is what 145.83 tensile and AB, it is 520.83 tensile. So, this is the final step wherein we have completed the truss example. Now, I hope that this is the method wherein you are very much comfortable now. The next example that we will take is again a special case and we will see how to solve that. Thank you.